Camping, camping, camping. Camping is the most toxic thing you can do as a hunter. Hi, I'm Music Man, and today I'm going to teach you how to do just that. As much as I know you all would really like to, face camping at the chair is a terrible idea. Now as fun as it would be to hit Psyche in the chair while he's streaming, See, now you're just giving me one more reason to hate broken wheelmates. This is, this is a terrible way to camp. In order to camp the chair effectively, it is important to learn the concept of patrol camping. Let me use an analogy. Let's just say as a hypothetical that this was you and this was your high school best friend. Once you two graduate from high school, you're sad and by yourself. Your friend will only want to reach out with you if you're out partying with other friends. If I didn't go out to a large social gathering with my friends, chances are I wouldn't see any of my friends from high school again. This is the exact same in IDV. Let me explain. If no survivors are pressuring to make the rescue, you need to be finding ways to apply pressure to the other ciphers, aka leaving the chair. If they aren't rescuing, they are cipher rushing and that should be illegal. Therefore, we need to find ways to pressure those ciphers without straying too far from the chair. These can be with ability items, teleports, or if you're a dream witch, you can use literal clones of yourself to harass. If a survivor comes back to the chair to rescue, not a super difficult concept, you just walk back to the chair too. In Identity 5, some chairs are better for stuffing, some good for mat pressure, and some just make me want to cry. Much like my mom redecorating the house every two days, you need to figure out what chairs you need to use for each individual situation. Generally speaking, you want to prioritize chairs that are in good central locations that are on ciphers that are being decoded on. This will allow you to be ahead of the cipher rush for once, but will not help fix your ping issues. In addition to this, chairs that are isolated and don't have many good areas to run to also make good chairs to use as well, especially if you're using a great camping hunter such as Bonbon or Feaster. With the exception of Priestess, the Broken Queen herself. No survivor is just going to be able to randomly approach the chair through walls out of nowhere. One way you can get an idea of where rescue is coming from is by keeping tabs on where the decoding is. You can see where the decoding is by looking for the wiggling ciphers. Where you see the wiggling ciphers stop is most of the time where the rescue is going to be coming from. If you can't determine where the rescue is coming from, just don't go too far away from the chair. If you get one booty smack during the rescue approach, Getting a second booty smack will put that survivor on the ground which will greatly slow down the decoding. This is especially prevalent when Merc is rescuing as he has a healing ability which will put him on the ground for 10,000 years. There's really not much more to focus in on on this tip so let's just move on. The characters in play will often determine your camping strategy. These can range from godly to normal to why even bother? This will often determine how much you focus on getting the stuff rather than mostly going for cipher pressure and strategies that you'll be using to camp. For instance, if you're up against a team of stunners, you may consider carrying excitement to help you counter any stuns that they might have. Depending on what hunter you choose against these comps, you might be able to use your regular abilities to cancel out entire survivor abilities. When you're up against an army of Lucas, chances are you'll be able to stuff them as long as you're playing a character that has a decent amount of camping ability. If you're up against a team of embalmers, never play photographer. And if you're against a team of priestess, just disconnect. It's not even worth the morality points to go through that kind of suffering. You all thought I was gonna miss the most important tip, didn't you? Well, you're wrong. A music man, this is supposed to be a five steps to improve video, not six. Well, shut up, it's my video, you little. If a rescue is going close to half or close to elimination, stall out the rescue past half or after the chair time is complete. You can do this by not swinging early and trying to wait and predict when the survivor will try to rescue, because they will rarely actually wait until it goes past halfway or to elimination. That being said, don't bother trying to stall if you are just chair for the first or second time and there's an instant rescue attempt. You're about as likely to successfully stall out that rescue player as a European player is likely to have green pain. Well that's about all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash that like button, obliterate that subscribe button, and make sure to follow me on Twitch. I plan on posting more guides like this in the future, so be sure to stay tuned for future content on the channel. Bye everybody!